Hi, I'm Annie Painter with Annie's Art Institute. And this lesson involves beautiful tooled papers. I did a video with hand-painted papers. This is a little bit more. We're going to be doing six different kinds of papers. And I'll show you in a minute why we need them, because there's some other videos that have great lessons for you. I'm going to do six sets, as I said. One will be the yellow and magenta, those oranges and reds. Another will be the green family, from yellow to cyan. Uh, a third will be magenta to cyan, so we'll get all the violets, red violets, and blue violets. I'll try to add some white as we go. I'll do neutrals, and also I want to do one that has both or two color families in it. So you can see how we might do some violets and blues and then have some reds and oranges in the center. And here's why these are going to be so amazing. Let me show you a few projects. I have these also on video, so you can, once you've got these papers, you'll have what you need for these great projects. This has been really popular, and these are little um, trifold folios with accordion pages that can be just three or four or any number of modules. And on them, we have decorated with the tooled papers I'll show you how to make today. This is a plant panel called Hiding in Plain Sight. And if you came very close, you would see there's an insect here with all the insect parts. Hiding on a negative, that would be this space, and a positive shape plant. I also have in this lesson a way this can be done with early childhood without this complicated folding in half and quite this intricate sort of cutting. Now, I didn't do a video about paper weaving, but paper weaving is pretty simple and you could find how, how to do it many places. I just wanted you to see how it would be if you used the tooled paper. So I'd like to get started and I'll show you the different techniques that I use and how I set it up for kids and the supplies that we need right now. For our paint, I'm using Crayola washable tempera. If you have a different set of paints, that's fine. It will work too. But I use magenta, yellow, and turquoise, or cyan, as our three primary colors. In this particular um, event, I'm going to also add some white so we have some pastels. Now, what you see here is the way I set this up for a classroom. I have done this with first grade through adult. And let's say I have 24 kids. This is how I would set up for four students at a table. Um, I have a section in the center that's going to have no paint at all. Room for palettes and brushes for four children. And tools in the center. Now, I would strongly recommend that you do not give children way more tools than one or two to start with. So I'm just going to be starting with scrapers and a comb and this is a scraper, bigger one. I found by uh, experience that although it's a very free, wonderful thing to do and invent and tool and paint, it really is important if you're teaching a whole class to show them a technique and ask them to try it. So do my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn. And then, once they've tried all the tools, let them have some time to invent. Rather than moving the paints or changing paints every time the children need a new color family, I would move the children and just rotate the children through so all the kids have a chance to use all three color families, but you're not washing brushes and washing tools and going nuts. The first thing I'm going to show you is the oranges. And the reason that I have this um, marked off is so that we don't get paint on our clothes. And this is a way to train the kids that you do not want to paint before you tool. You don't want to paint very much before you tool because it will dry. So we just paint a section at a time. And it becomes an all-over design. I'll show you how that works here. We're going to use yellow and magenta. You want to have a two-inch paintbrush with natural bristles. Don't buy the kind that are black because then the kids can't see what color they've mixed. So I'm just going to start with some yellow. And it needs to be very gooey, really wet. I wouldn't go more than three brush strokes before you tool. That way you have lots of paint and 
it doesn't start to dry. And the first thing I want you to experience is the scraper and how to hold it and give it some pressure. So without tearing the paper, I've got really sturdy butcher paper here. I'm just going to make some checkerboard yellow. You can see that it is actually taking the yellow up and leaving a darker value of the yellow. And whatever you have left, it's really going to be pretty because I want you to just get rid of it on this page. Later I'll put a darker color on and scrape it off and we'll see bright yellow underneath. Tools go back there. Now let's mix. Tiny bit of magenta. Well, we don't want it to go dark too soon. Again, it's very gooey. And we're going to put it on and keep going right over the line. The lines mean nothing. We want just a continuous page of beautiful color and shape and pattern. And let's continue with that same tool. Now I want you to try things like zigzagging and curves with the same tool that we use for these squares. So let's do some curves. And look how that's taking the paint right off and leaving those beautiful darker orange areas. We have some we can use here and save when I get to that point. That'll be underneath whatever color I put on top. And I'll keep mixing. I'm going to keep using that tool for a little while and you just watch how that tool works. Zigzag. Now this tool can actually, this is a plastic tool, um, but it can actually be cut with sturdy scissors. So I'm going to show you what that same tool looks like when I've cut it with scissors. And I can do some interesting lines with it. They're pretty, aren't they? I love that tool. Let's see what else it can do. What if I try a circle with this tool that's been cut? Or half circles. Now this isn't exactly the cleanest skill, but I think I have it down to the best that we can do. I have a, a wet rag for every kid's table, and um, we do use a lot of paint. If it gets on us, we're washable. But the idea of not having a lot of it accumulate in here is a good one. Just scrape it off as you go into the area that you're going to work on next. I'm trying to be sure I have all the um, colors between magenta and yellow. So I look at, I'm getting a medium orange, yellow, um, some almost red here, red orange. Just want to have a wide variety of oranges. Now I'll try a comb. I'm going to do the same thing I tried at first with the scraper, just the squares. And it needs more. I'm going to tell you, I know how this works so I can do another pattern in there. Needed a little more attention, a little more interest. Now sometimes when students are working, They'll leave a white line, really thinking that they, they need to make each of these separate. They don't need to make them separate. Again, I just mark that so that they don't go painting too far before they start to tool or the paint dries and they don't get a pattern. And see the yellow is coming through. It's very pretty. I'll try it from this side. Mm. Wow, look at this. And there we have it. Now it's really important that we hang this up to dry. It's pretty heavy with paint. And in fact, it's going to be gorgeous because when it dries, there'll be an embossment. They'll, all these parts that, that are still very gooey now will stand up above the surface and have a texture.
The next piece of paper I want to make for you will have two color families in it. This is an example of a plant panel done with a piece of paper that had both orange and violet in it. And up to now you have seen the three color families. That would be the oranges, the greens, and the violets. That would be the maximum I would ever do with a, with a class. I'm going to start with my oranges in the center, running down the center. I think I just want to have a whole center section like this, thinking about a project, thinking about maybe a plant that would have a bright, glowing center and then a darker violet top. We'll see. So that's the center. I've worked that pretty thoroughly. I'm going to put a little bit more white over here, and then I'll begin the violets and blues on both edges. I might even go back with that, but we'll leave that there, and I'll start the violet. Of course, that would be some magenta and some cyan or turquoise. Now, because I have a very dark sort of red-orange feeling to this, I don't want this to, this to be very bright magenta. I think that would be not harmonious. What I want to have is something that's much more into the blues and blue-violets. So I'll be making more of that darker blue and blue-violet. It'll look a lot better. Those are complements. They're crossed from each other on the color wheel. Final touch over here was something big, one of these, I think. Mostly cyan. Bring it down. Bring it into here. And take a big one like this. Or maybe this one again. These are pretty because the other colors are showing through. Now I have one more thing to do, and that would be to add some accents. And I will do that with a piece of cardboard now. We have a whole lot of messy things that need to go into the dirty brush and tool uh, bucket, which I'm going to do that right now. Kind of clean up my space a little. Take my palettes, so they're handy, and get my cardboard. 
And let's see where I could maybe just use some pure white. I'm loving how this is looking right here, so I think I'll add some more white. So I'm already seeing areas that I could cut out and use in a collage or how interesting it would be to have a plant that was like this and had a, a centerpiece would be the oranges and then the stem and leaves be the blues and the blossom be the blues. This will be a very good paper for lots of different projects. I will call that enough. It needs to be hung up to dry. And my last piece for you will be neutrals. That means I'm trying to make earth colors. So I'll be taking two complements and trying to make browns and other earthy tones. Okay, now I'm ready to try a page of neutrals for you. And that would mean I need to mix between any two opposites on the color wheel. So the easiest way for you and your family or your students to do this would be to take one primary and its opposite secondary color. So you'd use yellow, but you'd have to mix yourself a supply of violet. That would have been cyan and magenta, but you need to start with the secondary. I'm going to try green, which is a secondary. I need to make myself some green, and the opposite will be magenta. That's how what I'm going to use to try to make your neutrals. And a third possibility would be making yourself some orange and using the opposite cyan. So let's move over to the table and see what I can do. So neutrals are more challenging for me. I I'm never quite as sure of myself, so I will attempt to make some neutrals and do some of the things you saw me do with the other color families by combining the two opposites that I chose. So I have some magenta. I'm going to get some green. That's really pretty. Mm -hmm. But remember, I have to tool these things before they uh, dry. In fact, this one I might just use as sort of an undercoat. That's nice. And put some other kind of neutrals on top. This is a good idea, this undercoat. Let's have a little more green and a bit of magenta and see what we get. I want you to see what happens when I add white to this color. Mix fans, pale pastel fan. I'm going to turn it around so I can work on it a little bit closer to myself here. I'm very much liking what's happening here, but I want more brown, real true brown, so I'm going to attempt to bring that color up here and finish it off. Chocolate and green. So quickly, what will we do? Give it a good edge all the way around. To unify it, very nice. And now we will give it some vertical action. I really hope you will love doing these papers. Make yourself a whole bunch of them and you'll have some amazing pieces. Until we meet again, this is Annie Painter. Goodbye.